Hi everyone, my name is Paul Nguyen and I'm a Solutions Engineer here at Palto Networks. Today I'll be giving you a demo of the Palto Networks app for Splunk. I'll be showing you what's new in the 6.0 release of the app as well as guiding you on how to use some of the new dashboards we have created in this release. As always, you can find the full documentation for the app on splunk.paltonetworks.com. You can get information on how to install the app and the add-on and where you can get support. This is the Palo Networks application for Splunk version 6.0. We have completely redone the dashboard as well as the navigation. Based on customer feedback, we redesigned the UI to optimize workflow. The navigation at the top has changed. We have separated the dashboards into three separate areas of operations. The activity menu contains notable events that you want to look into but aren't necessarily bad. If we look here at the threat menu, threats are things which are generally bad and we have split them up into these separate dashboards such as network, endpoint, malware, and we'll be focusing on a few of these new dashboards in the demo. We also have added the operations menu, which gives us visibility into our system's health. We've added a few new dashboards here, one for viewing all the configuration changes on the firewall, threat intelligence auditing, data model audit, as well as all of the endpoint operations. The first dashboard under activity menu is the user behavior dashboard. The user behavior dashboard gives us useful information around the users on our network. At the top, we can see all the different event types related to user activity, we can see which applications are not using default ports, as well as rare applications seen on the network. And in 6.0, we have integrated Aperture, our enterprise SaaS security cloud, which allows us to detect possible data leaks. If you're not familiar with Aperture, it allows us to secure business critical data residing within enterprise SaaS applications. The SaaS activity and threat dashboards provides visibility into Aperture. We can see SaaS usage over time, as well as which SaaS applications are being used. And based on the policies set up in Aperture, we can see the actions that have been taken. File activity gives us information regarding bytes transferred, direction, zone activity, top apps seen on the network, as well as a feed for file activity. The web activity dashboard will give us information on top destinations, what type of web categories we're seeing on the network. We can see top applications and content type. We can also see top blocked continued host names. On the Palta Networks firewall with URL filtering enabled, we can get logs based on host names that were blocked. However, the user decided to continue on to the host name anyways. Under the threat menu, we have a new dashboard called All Incidents. And what we wanted to do here is bring together all the bad events into a single dashboard from across all Palo Alto Network products. At the top, we have correlated logs coming from the firewall. That is a new log type introduced in PanOS 8.0. When the firewall sees a series of events that are correlated to be known bad, it generates a correlated log. We can also see network incidents also coming from the firewall, endpoint incidents from our endpoint security client called Traps, we have Aperture SaaS related incidents and malicious wildfire submissions. Wildfire is our dynamic malware analysis cloud. We see threat subtypes and severity over time. And at the bottom, we have introduced a panel called the incident investigation feed. This feed looks like most SIM feeds we are used to. We can prioritize threat events by sorting severity and actions taken. We have taken this a step further and incorporated threat intelligence into the feed with autofocus and mind meld integration. Autofocus provides context around malware and other threat actors. Where wildfire can detect if a file is malicious, autofocus gives us the ability to find out where it came from, if it's a prelude to another attack, and which other threats are associated with it. It leverages Unit 42, our internal threat research team. Unit 42 gathers threat intel from all nodes and endpoints all around the world, and that research is then made available to autofocus subscribers. This integration with autofocus automates the threat hunting process. Rather than investigate each threat, we are able to correlate the feed with threat intel and bring to the top what is most important. These are incidents on our network that are known bad according to threat intel from autofocus, providing our SOC teams with an actionable starting point. We have a critical that was blocked and we can probably ignore that. So we know that this was blocked probably by the firewall, but you can see we have some highs that were allowed and you can click on this link. This brings me into the incident context view. When we designed this dashboard, we asked our customers about their workflow and what they did when they were investigating threats. They would tell us they would go to specific systems to investigate. They would open up the firewall to look at logs or endpoint logs, download PCAPs, check out virus total, open autofocus to get more context. And what we wanted to do was learn from their workflow and provide a single dashboard that has automated that entire process. You can see right away the source of the incident, so we know where this incident came from. And with that correlated information, we've generated something called incident details. So this is gathered information from all across our network, all the different log types to come up with this information. You can see the client IP as well as the server IP. We have the URL host name, and we can even see that this is a malware site. We have URL category showing malware site. We have the file name as well as the file hash, 
uh, wildfire verdict. Uh, so we can see a wildfire verdict came back as malicious. Any autofocus tags that were associated with it and session properties. Down here we have the events in the incident session. These are all the events that are related to this particular session. We have all the related autofocus tags. We can see that this is a ransomware related to WannaCry. We have the top firewall rules that are triggering this event as well as the top firewalls that are reporting the incident. We also see the threats by type over time for the particular IP address. And we've also gone ahead and done a search across the entire network for similar incidents. We also see the similar endpoint incidents here at the bottom. As you can see here, we have a few endpoint logs that are showing up as blocked by traps. We noticed on the previous dashboard that this was a high severity and that it was allowed. The firewall saw the file being downloaded and it had never been seen before. So it was submitted to Wildfire Cloud for dynamic analysis. The firewall doesn't hold up the file from being downloaded. It allowed it through to the endpoint. It then tried to execute or install on the endpoint and Traps detected it, it was doing something malicious. So it stopped it. Traps has reported to Wildfire that it is a malicious file. And you can see here back at the top, Wildfire Verdict came back as malicious as well. Now at this point, all protections go into place. And once it is known malicious, it will never be executed or downloaded again. So we've done our analysis, we know what happened, and we can go ahead and make changes as needed. If there are other things you want to investigate further, you can also open these events in other places. This open in feature is a content aware menu. And depending on the context of the incident, you will get different menu items. In this case, we have the ability to cross launch into virus total to get more information, jump to autofocus to get more context, or click on search bar to create a Splunk search. If a PCAP is available, you may get the ability to download the PCAP directly from here. Let's cross launch into autofocus to get more context around this malware campaign. This drops us into autofocus with threat intel around the WannaCry malware. Right away you get the wildfire verdict, came back as malware. You can view the wildfire dynamic analysis report. You can see things such as file activity, observed behavior, any DNS activity that was generated. What we're mostly interested in are the indicators of compromise. The indicators of compromise are known bad indicators related to this malicious campaign. We can see all the IPs related to the malware campaign, as well as the domain names. If you're familiar with WannaCry, this is the kill switch domain register to stop the WannaCry ransomware. And we want to use this information and find out if anyone on our network is reaching out to this domain, as they are likely infected. We can use the add to remote search feature and generate a remote search. You can see at the top there's a URL already pre-filled for me. This will cross launch us back into our Splunk instance with a search for anyone in our network going to that host name. As you can see, there are a few logs with users reaching out to that host name. At this point, we can take some action or make changes as needed. Everything I've shown you so far has been very incident focused. We've improved the workflow and automized the threat hunting and investigation process. A new dashboard in 6.0 is the adversary scoreboard. And the idea behind this dashboard is to provide a zoomed out view of what's happening in our environment. The adversary scoreboard gives us perspective on the threat actors and campaigns, as well as malware families infecting the environment. At the top, we have the attack lifecycle chart. The advantage we have to preventing an attack is we can stop the attack anywhere along the attack lifecycle to be successful. You can see here we have a malware family of WannaCryptor, and this is the threat that we were just investigating. We can see that there were thousands of incidents created for this malware campaign, but only two endpoints were actually affected. So do we have to investigate the thousands of threat events or only investigate the two endpoints? By correlating the logs together, we provided the SOC team with a more reasonable starting point rather than hunting through the thousands of threat events. When we investigated this threat earlier, we know that it was seen on both the endpoint and the firewall, and we also know that it was blocked by traps. We can see that this malware campaign was successfully stopped at stage two of the attack lifecycle. It was seen on the firewall and delivered to the endpoint, but when it was executed, it was blocked by traps. Therefore, this attack was delivered, but it could not get executed, so it was stopped at lifecycle stage two. We can see there is a threat campaign called Lotus Blossom, and it was also seen on the firewall and it was allowed, but it was not blocked by anything. The attack life cycle stage shows two because we know it was delivered, but after that, we don't know what happened. It is possible this is an unmanaged device or doesn't have traps installed. From here, we can click on Lotus Blossom. This will drop us back into the all incidents dashboard, but filtered down to the event that we clicked on. We can see that this was a email campaign and it is being generated by a single user. And we have the email address of the user. Again, clicking on the event brings me back into the incident context view, which brings us back into the incident investigation workflow. We have focused on quite a few new dashboards today. The primary dashboards I would like to highlight are the adversary scoreboard, incident feed, and incident context view, which are the newest additions to our app. These dashboards are able to show us who is attacking us, how they are attacking us, and how effective are we in defeating them. To get more information about the app, visit us at splunk.palotonetworks.com.
and thanks for watching.